Let's dive into one of the trickiest topics in discrete probability distribution, the multinomial distribution. By the way, if you haven't already, make sure to check out the other videos in our probability series, where we break down topics like binomial and negative binomial distributions. Those will definitely help build a foundation for what we're about to cover today. Now, unlike the other distributions we've discussed, which usually deal with two possible outcomes, like success or failure, the multinomial distribution handles cases where there are more than two possible outcomes. To see this in action, let's explore a problem. A box contains four red, three blue, and three green balls. If six balls are drawn with replacement, what is the probability of getting two red, two blue, and two green balls? At first glance, this might seem like a regular probability problem, but notice that there are three different colors of balls, not just two outcomes. We're not dealing with a simple success-failure situation. Instead, we have multiple categories, red, blue, and green, and we're counting how many of each color appears in a fixed number of trials, in this case, six balls. This is what makes the problem different from binomial, geometric, or negative binomial problems. It's not about when the first success happens or how many successes occur in a fixed number of trials. Instead, we're dealing with multiple outcomes simultaneously, and we're interested in how often each outcome occurs within a fixed total number of trials. So, this is a perfect example of a multinomial distribution problem. The multinomial distribution deals with experiments where each trial results in one of k possible outcomes. If there are n independent trials and each outcome has a constant probability, we can use the multinomial distribution to calculate the probability of observing specific counts for each outcome. When you're dealing with multinomial distribution, the key structure to remember is that there are more than two possible outcomes for each trial, and you're asked to find the probability of getting specific counts for each of those outcomes over a fixed number of trials. Now that we've identified this as a multinomial distribution problem, Let's take a look at the formula. First, the left side of the equation involves a fraction that calculates the number of ways we can assign the different outcomes. It's like a combination, but now we're accounting for multiple categories, and not just two. On the right side, we see the product of the probabilities of each outcome, with each probability raised to the power of the number of occurrences for that specific outcome. This part tells us the likelihood of seeing exactly that many outcomes for each category. Now, I know this looks a little complicated, but trust me, it's easier than you think once we break it down. Let's go ahead and solve the problem to make it more intuitive. In our problem, the total number of trials, n, is 6, since we're drawing 6 balls. The count of red balls, denoted as x1, is 2. The count of blue balls, x2, is also 2. And lastly, the count of green balls, x3, is 2. For the probabilities, the probability of drawing a red ball, P1, is 4 out of 10 or 0.4, since there are 4 red balls out of 10 total. The probability of drawing a blue ball, P2, is 3 out of 10, or 0.3. And the probability of drawing a green ball, P3, is 3 out of 10, or 0.3. The equation then becomes 6 factorial divided by 2 factorial times 2 factorial times 2 factorial multiplied by 0 0.4 raised to the power of 2, multiplied by 0 0.3 raised to the power of 2, and lastly, multiplied by 0 0.3 raised to the power of 2. Now, calculating this, we got 90 multiplied by 0 0.16, multiplied by 0 0.09, multiplied by 0 0.09, which gives us 0 0.1166. Therefore, the probability of drawing exactly two red balls, two blue balls, and two green balls is 11.66%. All right, what if we answer another problem and we increase the number of combinations? So imagine you're hosting a party and you've just asked 14 guests about their favorite ice cream flavors. The survey finds that 40% of people like chocolate, 25% like vanilla, 20% like mango, and 15% like strawberry flavor. What is the probability that out of 14 people, Five like chocolate, four like vanilla, three like mango, and two like strawberry. Now, this is another classic example of a multinomial distribution. Why? Just like the previous problem, we're dealing with more than two possible outcomes. 
In this case, the different ice cream flavors. We have four categories, chocolate, vanilla, mango, and strawberry. And we want to know how many people fall into each category over 14 trials. Let's break down the problem and solve it step by step. In our problem, the total number of trials, n, is 14, since we're surveying 14 people. The number of people who like chocolate, denoted as x1, is 5. The number of people who like vanilla, x2, is 4. The number of people who like mango, x3, is 3. And lastly, the number of people who like strawberry, x4, is 2. Now for the probabilities. The probability of liking chocolate, p1, is 0 0.4 since 40% of people like chocolate. The probability of liking vanilla, P2, is 0 0.25. The probability of liking mango, P3, is 0 0.2. And the probability of liking strawberry, P4, is 0 0.15. We'll now substitute these values into the multinomial formula. The equation becomes 14 factorial divided by 5 factorial times, 4 factorial times, 3 factorial times, 2 factorial, multiplied by 0 0.4 raised to the power of 5, multiplied by 0 0.25 raised to the power of 4, multiplied by 0 0.2 raised to the power of 3, and multiplied by 0 0.15 raised to the power of 2. Now calculating everything together will give us 0 0.0181. Therefore, the probability that out of 14 people, 5 like chocolate, 4 like vanilla, 3 like mango, and two like strawberry is about 1.81%. Wow, wasn't that a fascinating dive into the world of multinomial distribution? Problems like these might look complex at first, but once you break them down, they become much more manageable. Remember, when dealing with multinomial distribution, it's all about counting multiple categories across a fixed number of trials. You aren't just interested in one outcome, but multiple outcomes happening simultaneously which makes it more dynamic and exciting. If you enjoyed this deep dive into probability, be sure to check out the other videos in our probability series. Thanks for watching, and good luck on your exam.